All right, you guys, back at it. I'm well caffeinated, although that's probably only just gonna send me to the bathroom every 15 minutes, uh, not get the job done faster, but let's see what we can do. So yeah, what's the next thing we gotta do? We gotta board this little piece, pretty easy. Just need to get a measurement from here. 79 and a half. 79, 79 and a half. How on earth does that change that much in that small space? Crazy, 79 and a half. All right, you guys, another really good tip is to, whenever possible, bring the sheet right over to what it is you need to measure. And then this way I'm gonna be able to pull my measurements right down to the board right here. And it's gonna make it way faster and easier for me to measure and cut. All right, you guys, the moment of truth is almost here, except I'm gonna taper these edges a bit. Not sure if you can even see that on the camera, but I know that these top corners kick in a little bit. So I'm just compensating for that a bit. And now we get to see if I get this in the first try or if it's a template piece. <laughs> template piece is when you make a piece that's almost right, and except it shows you all your mistakes. All right, let's see. So where are we tight? We are tight in this corner and in this corner. What are we gonna do about that? Well, take it down and rasp it. That's what we're gonna do. It's mostly this corner. Try that again. And you know what? For the heck of it, I'm gonna back bevel this top piece a little so I can carve it a bit. Should help. Probably couldn't even see what I was doing. Okay. Wire. That's good. That's just what we needed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. All right. Let's get some screws in here. Thumb still feeling a little tender. Couldn't find any band-aids. I just used CA glue to kind of seal it up. Crazy glue, if you guys don't know what I mean what it was developed for. Suturing up wounds in the battlefield. Almost forgot, this one needs the two inch screws. So you guys may have noticed that I didn't even bother putting, like trying to make this so that it was one piece of board. You know, most of the time I try and get it to be all one piece and not have little joints, but sometimes you just gotta pick your battles. I knew that trying to like measure and do that little piece while trying to get this whole thing up here, I mean, it'd probably just be way too loose or break off or just cause me a bunch of grief. So, you know, I picked my battles and just stuck to this one piece and we're gonna fill this little chunk in. I'm probably gonna do that off camera. In fact, I'm probably gonna board the rest of this place off camera because I feel like I'm not ever gonna get it done unless I turn it off. 
But there is a couple last things that we need to talk about that should have been at the very start of the video. Had this been a normal boarding job, I would have had an opportunity to get into them. And so that is making sure that you have bevel to bevel, like I do right here, and butt joint to butt joint, which is not what we have right here. Right here we have a bevel to butt joint. And you wanna try and avoid those. I'll bring you up closer to show you why. So when we look at two factory edges meeting, right, we got the bevel to the bevel, you can clearly see there's room for tape and mud in there. So when you make a joint in that, it hides it perfectly, super nice and flat. And then we've got this other one where we have a cut end, so a butt joint up to a factory joint. And what that creates is an uneven gap. So you can see it's flat on one side and beveled on the other. So what we end up needing to do on something like that is this side has to get pre-filled before you can even tape it. So you can't go straight to taping this thing. So as I was saying, what you wanna wind up with again is bevel to bevel so you get those nice flat joints and you don't wanna wind up with the bevel to a butt joint because that requires an extra step of pre-filling before tape and doesn't wind up quite as flat as a regular butt joint even. Well, it usually does actually, but sometimes they can be a little bit problematic, more likely to crack, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, there's one last thing we need to get into and that is that your joints should typically be staggered. So what that means is, I'll draw it out on the board actually, that's gonna give you the best idea. Okay, so what we're gonna be drawing out is, here's your framing members, 16 inches apart, or 24 inch if it's a truss ceiling. So typically what you're going to do is your board is going to come in here and let's say, let's say you end it right here. You're gonna do another one to right here. And then on your next row, you're gonna actually start back here. And it's gonna go, you know, to somewhere like that. So as you can see, it starts to be like a brick pattern. And then most likely your next one is gonna start where the last one left off, right here. So you're going to stagger all of your joints. So the reason that joints are typically staggered is instead of having a full floor to ceiling butt joint, you only have four foot long butt joints every here and there. So it makes them easier to hide, it makes them less likely to crack, it adds some extra rigidity to the structure because that butt joint can't be like flexing down the whole run of the joist or the stud. So when you line up all your butt joints, that's known as railroading and it's not typically how we do it. So you always stagger it. The factory to factory and the staggering should have been like the first thing in the video because those are some of the biggest mistakes that people make. But okay, I gotta interrupt the flow of this video a little bit unfortunately because I forgot to have my mic plugged in for these next clips. And um, just so you know what you guys are missing out on, I'll play a little bit of how bad that audio sounds. Here I was thinking I'd shown you guys just about everything. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, um, it's pretty unacceptable. So I'm gonna have to just kind of use that stuff as B-roll and explain what I'm explaining in those clips. So one of the most important things that you can do is refasten the old drywall. So it's super important that you refasten at every stud because when you rip off the drywall or, or cut it and pull it off, you don't know where the last fastener was. So that drywall could be kind of floating on that stud for you know up to easily 12 inches. So when you refasten it, then you know that you've got sound drywall all around that you're then gonna be patching into. And the other thing that it does is it also shows you where all the studs are because once you get that board tacked up there, Without those little screws on the old drywall, you're not, unless you draw lines, right? But then that's just double the work. So once you put the screw there, now you can see exactly where every stud is. So that helps make it way easier when you're putting up that new sheet. Okay, now I'm pretty sure that was everything I said in that clip. And I think I lost steam and just wanted to finish the job. So I ended up boarding all the patches and stuff without saying anything. So we'll just have to have a little musical interlude for that part and then get back to the rest of the video. But anyways, that's what happened with that clip.
I'm done, done. Which means I'm ready to start taping, but I'm gonna do that tomorrow. You know, it's amazing how much faster it goes once I actually just stop talking to the camera and just get the tools on, get it done, and put my mind to the actual task at hand. Um, well, because when I'm filming, the task at hand is telling you guys about things. So anyways, there's really no need for me to be babbling. I'm just actually happy I'm done. Let's take a close look at this. Okay, all pretty standard around here. I know guys are always wondering about these wires just sticking out of the wall. That's how we do baseboard heaters here in Canada. Nothing to write home about. Decided to just add some backing here instead of splitting it on the joint. That way I was gonna be able to have just two pieces of board instead of too many. So I'm happy with that. And then we got these over here. I always like it when I manage to get little ones like this in without actually breaking the board. Little crunch right there, but there's gonna be so much mud covering this, it won't matter. We got this one. You know, nothing to write home about, just a patch. And then we got all this stuff, which you guys saw. So, you know, we got some gaps. I'm okay with that. Taper can fix it. But yeah, it's all ready to be taped. I'm gonna come do that tomorrow. Should be fun. Now we're officially done. I hope this crazy every single mistake I can think of while boarding video wasn't too uh, all over the place. It was a really hard video to try and um, make the things sequentially in terms of what I think is the order of operations and importance. But hopefully if you made it this far, you learned a whole bunch of things about drywall that you didn't know before. Anyways, yep, time for me to go take off, pick up some materials for tomorrow and I hope you're doing well. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Lope. Um, yeah, if you've made it this far, let me know in the comments. Hashtag Lope. <laughs> Lipstick on a pig project. I think that's my favorite name for it. It just doesn't have a, a good ring to it unless you're initiated. Um, anyways, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope you're doing well. Till the next video.